What's up YouTube? On this episode of Cotty Wampa Overland, we're going to be talking about Gaia GPS and how to use it during your overlanding expeditions. Here lately we've been getting a lot of questions about our mapping, what we use for navigation, how we gather GPX tracks, and what we do with them once we've got them. So I thought I would take this opportunity to expand on that a little bit with you guys. We've been doing mapping both professionally and personally for a little over 20 years. So this is not something new to us. We've used several different formats and the one that I think is most user friendly and easiest for somebody just to pick up and use for navigation and for mapping is Guide GPS. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look through Guide GPS, how to set it up, not just on your phone, but on the computer too, how to do a, bit, a little bit of route planning. And we're going to show you how to download a GPX track, what you're going to do with it, what you get it downloaded, and how to get it uploaded to where you can see it on your computer and on your tablet or phone, whichever one you use when you're out exploring. Guide GPS is an online mapping and navigation software. You can use it on your desktop, your laptop, your tablet, or your phone. It's all cloud-based, and once you get it put up onto their cloud, you can access it from any of your devices. Guide GPS is a membership-based software. It goes anywhere from free to premium. With free, you can plan your trips, you can navigate, and you can even record your tracks, but you can't download maps to be able to go off-grid. The only map layer that you get with free is Gaia Topo, uh, which is worldwide and it's a good uh, base layer, but there's a lot of other layers that you can use to enhance your mapping and navigation process. There's a standard membership uh, which allows you to download maps and you can use those off-grid or without cell service. You do have some choices in the map layers, but not as many as premium. Premium is your best bang for your buck. It's customizable with your specific uh, activity. It's best for off-roading and off-grid work and can also be used professionally. I've used this with several or for several mapping projects. You get a full map catalog and it's not real bad priced. For $36, you get a year. For $17, you can get the membership or of course of free. And here's the things that you do get with each one of their memberships. Sign up is really easy. You can go in here and put in your email address and password. Just click on there and it'll let you automatically fill out these fields. Once you get signed up, it'll ask you what level of membership that you want. And that choice is yours from there. We're going to go ahead and log in here. When it first pops up, it's going to bring you up a map. It's going to have a lot of lines and a lot of waypoints on here. Um, and this is stuff that we've already done in the past. The desktop or laptop version of Guide GPS is very handy. It allows you to do some route planning, some research, and the layers over here and the other tabs are very similar to what you'll find on your tablet or your phone. I'm going to start right here with layers. With layers, you have several different layers. This is the premium and you have all of these different options that you can use and there's even more on here that you can download. The ones that we prefer to use is these five or six right here. I've got world imagery up, the motor vehicle use map, which I normally keep up here at the top, Net Geo Trails Illustrated, Gaia Topo, Shaded Relief, and MVUM. And I'll click some of those on and off just to show you a little bit more about what they do. When it comes to public lands, and wanting to know where you can go within a national forest or BLM land or something like that, the motor vehicle use map you get from national parks and state forests are very handy. You see these white lines right here? These will actually tell you that those are within the national forest and you can drive on them. You can click on those and you can tell over here what they're open to and what the seasons they're open for. So you can tell that this particular road here, Stevens Knob, and it's open to virtually everything all the way throughout the year. 
The next layer that, that I like to use is Shaded Relief because if you turn Shaded Relief off, um, you don't get a whole lot of detail. And if you're not really um, experienced in using topographic maps, you can see where the, all of the contour lines might be a little bit deceiving in, in figuring out where the peak is and where the valleys are. But if you turn that Shaded Relief layer on, then it becomes pretty obvious that these are ridge tops here and these are the valleys down below. Just makes a little bit easier to read. The next layer that we're gonna look at is the Gaia Topo feet map. And you can tell that it shows quite a bit of detail. There's a lot of trails here. Uh, these are walking trails within uh, the National Forest. You can see this is a road here. Um, has some of our trails that we've already done. One of the other things that's really neat about the Guy Topo is it shows you different attributes on the map, like trailheads or camp areas. You can click on that camp area and it might show you a picture, sometimes it don't, but it'll tell you a little bit about that camp area. So those are neat things within Guy Topo uh, that you may want to be aware of. One of the layers that I prefer to use, especially when we're in national forest or federal land is the Nat Geo Trails Illustrated. You can tell it's got a whole lot of detail. Um, it's a lot of different areas that you can pick up on. It gives you a lot more detail as far as what the trails are and what the roads are. So you can tell that this is a hiking trail. This Michigan Camp Road is actually a Jeep trail. Um, and then there's trailheads here camping, or uh, not camping areas, but picnic areas and trailheads. But then you can go on up, and if you find a trail area that has camping, then you're gonna see that as well. And it's gonna show you the same things. One of the things that I really like about this is, like right here, it shows you that this double hash line, that's a gravel or an unmaintained road. And the reason I know that is I can come over here to NetGeo on the information tab and I can click on it and it will actually give me a legend of what everything is on that layer. Gaia GPS actually does that for all of the layers so you can go in here and learn about what they are. If you want to open it in a new window you can actually click right here and then it will bring up the whole legend where it's much more readable for older folks like me. The next thing on the tabs that we're going to look at is waypoints and how to set up a waypoint when you're planning or you've gone to an area that you, you want to highlight, be able to remember to go back to. So all you have to do is click the waypoint button and it will bring it up. And once it brings it up here, it'll bring it up in the center of the screen, but it doesn't have to stay there. You can move it around wherever you want to. So let's say that we want to maybe put one right here for a potential campsite. All right, so we've put it there and it's given us our coordinates now and we can name it. So you just type in potential campsite. Now we can change the icon by clicking right here on change icon tab and we can make it a tent or we can make it an airplane or helicopter or whatever we want to make it. If we find some water, of course there's water there. So we're going to make that a potential campsite and then we're gonna save it, and there it is. So the next question may be, okay, we've put that campsite where it may be a potential area there. How do we get to it? How do we build us a route that we can follow to be able to, to navigate uh, to this new campsite? Well, there's a tool right here called the Create Route Tool. And once you click on it, you can click on, okay, I'm right here, and I wanna follow this road all the way down, and if it is a road that's already there, Guide GPS will snap the line directly to it. And you can click on that, and it tells you that it's 10.7 miles, and we're gonna be up to about 1,700 feet, about right there is gonna be our highest area, and then we're gonna start going back down, of course. So. Our routing mode is going to be driving, didn't really change anything, and then if we want to change the color of this line, then we can change the color to any of these colors here. 
make it a little more visible. And once we get done, we can save that. And now we just follow that line on our tablet or our phone, and that'll take us right there. That's kind of an introduction to route planning. We get a lot of questions about GPX tracks. How do we find them? What do we do with them when we get them? I'm going to show you a little bit about how we find those, um, where they're located at. Once you get them, what do you do with them? We're working on a project where we're thinking about early next year going down to the Georgia Traverse. Uh, it's a trail that goes across northern Georgia. We've been on a little bit of it kind of by accident uh, while we were doing the Smoky Mountain 1000. So I'm going to take you with me as I do a little bit of research. I find the GPX track for the Georgia Traverse, and we're going to get that uploaded onto Guide GPS, and I'm going to show you how all that works. So you can see here I'm at my search screen, and what I want to type in is if I'm looking for a GPX file for Georgia Traverse, I'm simply going to type in Georgia Traverse GPX file. All right. So it's going to bring you up to several different sites, obviously. Uh, this one is Georgia Overland. So we'll click on that and see if they've got anything here. Now, obviously, it tells you how to use the Georgia Traverse files, um, and then it will give you step-by-step -step directions here on how to use it for Guide GPS. So let's go to Download, and we're going to download both of these. So we want them in... You can do it in shape files, you can do it in KMZ files, or you can do it in GPX files. The difference is, is a shape file is used more for GIS software, uh, such as ArcGIS or things like that. It's more of a professional level GPS mapping system. The KMZ files are downloadable into Google Earth or Google Maps, and those can be used there. The ones that we want to use uh, primarily for uh, guide GPS are GPX files. So you can see here that we've got downloads for the tracks and downloads for the waypoints. So we're going to want to download both of those. So we'll click on that, and it's downloading a zip file. We'll go ahead and click on the other one and download it as well. You can see they're popping up down here. Now that we have our GPX files downloaded, we're going to want to import them into Gaia. So what we're going to do is we're going to click over here on this little import data button. Then we're going to select our file. From there we'll go to our Georgia Traverse, wherever you decided to put it in your filing system. And we're going to open that file. It says that it's a large file import, and are we okay with that? Yes. Once it's imported, it's going to ask you if you want to save all of your items. You're going to say yes. So now that we've got our GPX files downloaded and imported into Guide GPS, here's what they look like. You can see the tracks here. You can click on those tracks and it tells you a little bit about where it's at. It highlights it, tells you how long it is, if there's any elevation gain or anything like that. So the other thing I really like about this, especially the Georgia Traverse, is there's a huge amount of information as far as waypoints go. It tells you what the intersections are specifically. Tells you where the pavement ends and begins. So it gives you an idea of how much uh, how much blacktop you're going to be on versus, versus how much gravel or dirt. The other thing it gives you are possible campsites. That one there says possible campsite. This one here says possible campsite with a large parking area. Um, if you've got a large group, that may be something that you want to look for. But there's a huge amount of information here. The other thing that's really cool about this is it goes to Guy's cloud, and that's where all of your information is stored. So all of this information is stored on my Guy cloud. This particular here where section, this particular section here where all of the waypoints are, that is the Georgia Traverse. 
these other lines that's down this way is part of the Smoky Mountain 1000 that we have already done. We've got a, a trip planned from here up to here coming in late January. But that's how it all works on the laptop. The neat thing is, is all of this automatically syncs with your tablet or your phone and I'll show you how that works next. So here we have our Samsung tablet. This is what we use while we're navigating on the trail. We're going to click on Guide GPS. Once we're in it, the tabs are a little bit different rather than going along here. You can see they're along the top. Your Apple uh, iPhones and iPads are even a little bit different than this, but you also have some tabs down here along the bottom. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this on a tablet or a phone. You're going to type in uh, Georgia Traverse GPX files just the same way as you would on the phone. We found georgiaoverland.com backslash download. Same page that we found on the, on the laptop. So from there, we're going to click on download the Georgia Traverse. And do you want to download this? Yes, I had already downloaded it, but now I'm going to open it. And there it is in a zip format. So we're going to unzip it. And now there it is, and it's in our internal storage in our downloads. So we're going to go out of there, go into GPS, or Gaia GPS, and then we're going to click on this little plus here, and we're going to import a file. So we go there, we import the file. It wants access to everything, so we yes, and we're going to go to our internal storage. Hit the wrong button there. So we're going to import. Downloads. And there is our Georgia Traverse tracks. And we'll click that again. And it is now importing. So now we have got in our saved items, we've got Georgia Traverse. We're going to make sure that that file layer is turned on. And we can go to our map. And once we go to our map, there is our new tracks that we can follow. Now, one of the things that you can do uh, with the tablet, just like you can do with the laptop, is you can change your layers on and off, just like we did before. We can move layers up on top of the other one. Anything that you can do on the desktop version, you can also do on the phone or the tablet version. This is a really easy program to use and learn. I hope this overview of Guide GPS has helped you out in some way. Specifically, I hope that it's been able to teach you how to use the GPX files, how to get them downloaded and imported into Guide so that you can use them effectively. If you like what we've done so far with this, let us know and we'll continue. If you have a specific question, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer it for you. Thanks again for watching Cotty Wampa Overland. We surely do appreciate it. Remember, like, share, and subscribe if you already haven't. We'll see you next time.